All right. Just finishing up my Discord blast. <clears throat> and uh, yeah. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to tonight's special live stream. Why it's special, I have no idea. Um, maybe it's the hat. You know, there's something to be said about having a nice hat when you're uh, on the air. So anyway, um, the plan for tonight is that we're going to be fine-tuning the day-night cycle in our game. We're going to be adding nighttime enemies and a boss combination. We're also going to be fleshing out the archipelago map. I still don't know how to say that word. Um, and we, if we have time, we're going to start on the docks map, which is the other direction you can go in our underwater tunnel. So without further ado, let's boot up our game. There we go. We're serving. So. And here is the game we have thus far. I believe it's still muted. Oh, it's muted and actually a bunch of the user interface is hidden. That's probably because I was taking some screenshots and stuff. So before we do anything, let's just uh, get that sorted out. And I've got the encounter rate set to zero in here. So we'll switchy that around. We'll also go into our boot scene that can be fine we'll leave the game's volume at zero for now because we've got our own music that we're bringing with us but all of this will unhide and that should bring us back to normal C, except for the fact that our clock is going super fast so we'll just switch that up and we'll get it going at a reasonable rate, which I believe I had a timer for right here. There we go. There we go, now we're ticking one minute per second, which is what we're gonna end up with in the final game. We've got encounters going. Got a stump. Our tree we can chop. Yeah, so this is all looking much like it should. I think that's the game back at baseline now. Um, oops. So, yeah, let's get started. The first thing I want to do tonight is um, fine tune our day night cycle. And what I meant by that was basically, if memory serves, Right now when you change maps, oh, look at that, the time actually stays where it was. Okay, so that's part of it done already, so that's cool. Um, however, the other part I want to get working is that certain maps, like when you're inside or underground or in a cave or something like that, I want to have it so that the maps, um, the tint of the map doesn't change because when you're outside it gets darker as it gets later. Um, but I don't want that to happen inside the, the tunnels and the caves and the inside maps and stuff. In fact, what I was thinking is I could likely put a um, something where you can specify how dark it should be in a given area where the uh, that isn't affected by the the time. So, to do that, I think what we're going to require is a new property on our maps. So like intro aisle will be, I just don't know what we should call this. We should call it maybe like, um, I'm not sure. Why don't we say like um, darkness. Uh, why don't, oh, I've got a good name for it. Why don't we call it dynamic darkness? It's true. 
And if dynamic darkness is false, then we're going to expect some other properties along with it. But for now, we'll we'll specify dynamic darkness as true on the maps where we're um, <coughs> interested in that. So that would be intro isle and archipelago, archipelago, whatever, you, however you say that. Um, that also has an encounter rate of zero. So let's just change that really quick. There you go. And why don't we move this darkness settings down underneath the encounter settings. So dynamic darkness is true on intro aisle and archipelago, archipelago. Again, not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, no worries there. So dynamic darkness, we'll give a comment here on the intro aisle because this is kind of our base map. We'll say specifies if map darkness changes with time. So that's that. Now, now that we've got that property in place, let's find it, let's define what we want it to be if it's false. We basically if it's false, we just want a set tint for the darkness. So why don't we just call it Actually, you know what? I'm going to put it on all of the uh, all of the maps just so that it's all the maps have all the data just cuz for me that makes me feel better. I don't know why, but call it fixed darkness is null on this map. Do the same on this guy. So we've got dynamic darkness is true. And when dynamic darkness is true, we, we're not going to even check fixed darkness, so it won't matter. But for intro aisle hut, Oops, what did I do there? And underwater tunnel, we'll copy these two properties and we'll drop them in like so. Boss key. What is boss key? Oh, right, boss key. That's because there is no boss in the intro aisle. So that's null, no worries there. But now we're going to modify these ones slightly. And we're going to say false for dynamic darkness in the tunnel. And we'll give it a default. We'll, we'll default the darkness to 0 0.5. We'll see how that looks for the fixed darkness. And the, inside the hut, we'll do much the same thing, but we'll say fixed darkness is 0. So that there's no darkened tint inside the hut. And under in the tunnel, there's a half of 0 0.75, whatever that would be. Um, and uh, yeah, so now let's code this into the map, shall we? So that, the map file that we extend lives in map. And first thing we're going to want to do is extract it from the constructor. Um, the constructor's arguments. So we'll say dynamic darkness and fixed darkness. We'll add them down here. We'll say this dot dynamic darkness equals dynamic darkness. This dot fixed darkness equals fixed darkness. So we're passing both of those through. Um, and uh, what else? Hold on. Before we go any further, I'm just going to hit up my bro and tell him I'm online because he likes to know when I'm live. Stand by. All right, 
So now we've got that passed in from the constructor and we can come down here to where we're setting up the, uh, the ticker. Um, spawn points. Oh, hold on, the ticker lives in the UI, so we're actually gonna have to pass this into the UI. Now my only concern is, is it going to receive this every time we, I think it will. I think this init function gets called every time. <laughs> um, so we'll call this uh, dynamic darkness. darkness is this dot dynamic darkness and fixed darkness is this dot fixed darkness so without that out of the way we can move into our game UI And right here where we're adding the tick, basically we can, um, let's actually take a quick look at the, uh, well, let's do it the way I'm thinking first. And then uh, we'll say init, We'll grab the dynamic darkness, darkness property, and the fixed darkness property. We'll pass them to this scene. So then we can say if this dot dynamic, ooh, actually, even better, I just realized we want to keep the clock ticking. However, oh, we're not even, we're not even applying the darkness here yet, but this is exactly what we're going to do conditionally now is we're going to say if this dot dynamic darkness will set the alpha of the night fade or the night graphics alpha rather. And then, hey, sent a uh, Sino Byte off sec. Thank you for the follow, good sir. Feel free to jump in the chat and tell us a little about what you're all about and why you're on Twitch and yeah, introduce yourself, man. So now, um, where we're initializing the night fade or the night graphics, we can say if this dot fixed darkness, we'll do this else, oops. Otherwise we'll just set it to zero by default. And if the fixed darkness is present, we'll say this dot night GFX dot set alpha fixed darkness, this dot fixed darkness. Thank you, VS code. Now, let's take a look. And maybe we'll pump up the uh, ticker time again, just to, so that while we're testing it, we can, it's really clear what's happening here. So let's do this again. So now we're ripping through time here. Oops, and I got into a fight already. I can starting to understand why I had that disabled. So let's, we're at 5 p.m. now, it should be a bit darker. Yeah, there you go, look at that, looking nice and dark. 
I'm just gonna let this cycle through once and just make sure it's going good. And then we'll go into the house and check the fixed darkness where it's set to zero. And then we'll go into the tunnel and set check the fixed darkness where it's set to uh, 0 0.5. This is looking pretty good to me. It's starting to get light around 5 a.m., which is what I was expecting. So at this point, I'm pretty happy to just uh, proceed on down here into the house. 9 a.m., pretty dark, pretty light, I should say. Um, now, it shouldn't matter what time it is in here. It should always be the same, which is looking to be true. I don't expect to see a whole lot of a tint at this time, but uh, yeah, there you go. We're getting on for four or five. It's still not dark in here, so I'm going to proceed on down here. Oop, and right there. Cannot read property set alpha of undefined. Interesting. Cannot read property set alpha of undefined. That's weird. Night GFX. Oh, night, because I called it night fade. Silly me. So that should be fine now. Interesting, too. I guess it's not triggering that when we hit zero, but that's okay. That doesn't really matter. Seven PM or dark. Go inside. Very light at eleven. Now what if we go into the cave? Should be about halfway dark in here. And that looks to be basically halfway dark. So uh, I'm quite happy with that. That'll work for me. So, with that out of the way, that is the first item on our list that I wanted to get done. Um, go like Z. Boy, why you no listen to me? There we go. So now we're on to the night enemies slash boss coming to you live from Kirk's bedroom. Dee Dee. <laughs> so night enemies slash boss. Now my in my mind what this was gonna look like was Basically, we'd have a set of enemies when it's light out and a set of enemies when it's dark out, and you would fight through those enemies in the day and night, and it would be much the same system as it is now, where you beat all the enemies and then there's a boss, and um, the only difference being it would vary based on if it's light or dark out. My only thing I'm now thinking of is... <clears throat> excuse me... Um, how we're going to handle this in areas where it has a fixed darkness, such as this cave that I'm standing in right now. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure if it would make sense to keep the same enemies for the whole cycle of the clock in the um, area where there's a continual lighter darkness um it's okay uh or if um it would make more sense for them to just be based off the clock um so i guess for now we can just start with an area that we know is going to have uh two different sets of enemies for sure like the intro aisle and outside area so right now we have an encounter rate and we have an enemy roster property. 
So what I think I'm gonna change that to is, I suppose enemy roster could have a property um, day and night in it. And in the daytime, this is what we're fighting. And we'll have to have a day boss and a night boss as well. So like that. And now at night, we'll have a separate roster, which is the night enemies. Um, Now for this, why don't we, while we're testing this, we'll add a few enemies. So we can go into my purchased assets. We can take a look through this bosses and minions pack, which I so love. <laughs> so let's start finding some nighttime enemies for the main island area. Let's just go through these and see if any of them catch our eye. He might be good for a boss at nighttime in the island. Um, although I was thinking something maybe as a like a ghost would be kind of cool. All right. So hey, okay, here's some ghosts. Boss, minion, minion. Minion, minion, that looks like such a lame ripoff of Haunter. It's not even funny. Um, <laughs> but I like these ghosts, these three. I'm probably not gonna use the Haunter guy. But uh, yeah, these, so we've got three different ghosts. And we've got our ghost boss. So I'm gonna copy all them. Hit up my uh, game assets folder. Also mark them that I've used them all, but we'll do that in a sec. Uh, source, assets, enemies, paste for items. Mark all those as been used. Uh-oh, what's going on? Oh yeah, it's working. It's just going incredibly slowly, but that's okay. Kind of weird, but whatever. So I'd love to give these guys all f cool names, but uh, I think for the sake of time and Going to bed at a reasonable hour, I'm just going to call it Ghost 1. Ghost 2. Ghost 3. And call him Big Ghost. So let's load them into our game's memory from the boot scene and I'm gonna load them all in up here. Enemies, here we are. So we'll copy that, move it down there. Ghost one. Ghost one. Ghost two. Ghost two, ghost three, and ghost three, and then we'll have the big ghost. And just confirm there's no errors when we load those in. Looking good so far. Now, why don't we add some 
beastry entries for them, bestiary, however you say that word. Those are my legacy ones, and these are the newer ones. Bob the Boulder, he's the most recent, so... Call this Ghost 1. And for now, we'll just keep it all the same as the knife block, even though we'll change that in a minute. And last but not least, Big Ghost. So we've got them all in our beastry. We'll mess around with their properties shortly. We're also going to have to find some sound effects for them. Um. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> you can be here, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> Anywho, um, so we've got them in our bestiary. Um, I think that's all we have to do for sort of initializing them. So we'll have ghost one, ghost two, Ghost 3, that's all we'll have for, just have the three ghosts. For now we'll just make one of each of them. And then we'll say, uh, boss, uh, boss key day or day boss key? Day boss key I think. And night boss key will be big ghost. Now we're gonna have to mess around with this quite a lot because the way it's currently set up is all based on the enemy... where are we storing it here? We've got... Uh, that's all our pointer information. I think it's somewhere near the top here. Yeah, working enemy roster is dot 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 enemy roster, so that's just copying the enemies over. Now, here we go. So, so this is the enemy encounter function where we have a couple instances of this working enemy roster. First thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to differentiate whether it's day or night. So, really, I guess what that's gonna look like is just the AMPM switch. Um, Although really it's probably going to have to be a little bit more complicated than that, but for now we'll just do it with the AMPM switch. Although unfortunately that lives in the game UI. So we're going to have to create a function, I suppose. Underneath tick clock we'll create a function to say get day night. And we'll just, for now, we're just going to return this.registry.clockam. So if it's true, then it's daytime, and if it's false, it's nighttime. So in here, we'll say if this.ui.getday, what did I call it? I already forget. Get day night. So if it's daytime, we'll run through the... This is going to have a lot of edge cases, I know already, because like what happens if it changes from day to night while you're fighting it, for example? It's going to be less frequent when they're um, in the real time scale where it's going slowly, but I also planned on having items that would change the time scale of the game. So like if you equip I don't know, a special medallion or something, it would uh, speed up time or slow down time or stop time or something like that. Reverse time would be kind of cool too. Um, but anyway, um, <clears throat> 
for now we're just gonna say daytime enemies else this will be nighttime enemies so working enemy roster dot what did we call it intro aisle day night perfect dot day and dot day um yep okay that makes sense so then we'll just do this, we'll just copy this loop, this in this nested loop, and we'll change this to night and night. Now we need to keep that search going because we're gonna need to find anywhere else where it's going, like here. So we'll say basically the same logic, we'll say but again, see now this is where things are going to get a little tricky because if it switches between day and night in the middle of a fight, we're going to have to account for that. Maybe a simple way of doing that would be to just pause time when they enter a fight. I'm not opposed to doing that, so that, that'll probably work well. But uh, for now, yeah, we'll just say, again, daytime if this.ui.getDayNight and we'll do the same logic but we're going to say working enemy roster dot day and working enemy roster dot night Now, um, now let's keep searching just to make sure we haven't missed any instances of this. Like here, win battle, enemy count plus equals, working enemy roster. Oh, I see. So this is checking how many enemies are remaining. So yeah, we're going to have to apply this here too. We'll say um, daytime. We'll say if this.ui.getDayNight. So if it's daytime, we'll do this. And nighttime. Otherwise, we'll do that. We'll just say working enemy roster dot day and dot day. And in this one, we'll say dot night and dot night. So that might be the last instance of it in here. However, I just want to go in and check where we're pulling because we also have this game random fight. Although I guess we're only passing an enemy key into that. So it might actually not require any, um, any uh, breaking changes for that. So that's cool. Let's take a look. Um, music key, so that's just where we're differentiating between a boss fight and a regular fight in terms of the music to play. Actually, I think this will work. Um, so the only tiny, so I don't think that requires any changes, so that's cool. I think the only thing really I want to change in here is just have it so it pauses time when it pauses this scene. So what we can do to accomplish that is create another function up here where we'll say pause time and we'll make another one called resume time. And I believe 
we can make this say this dot clock. I don't think that's taken yet. Clock text, clock text, 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 and clock. Yeah, I don't think that's taken. So we can use this dot clock and assign it to the repeating event. And now I believe that repeating event has pause and resume functions. Let's just take a quick look at that. Phaser three timer, Rex rainbow. Um, yeah, paused. So you can pause and resume a timer by changing that property. Uh, does it have any functions for that? I guess not, but that's okay. We'll say pause time. We'll say this dot clock dot paused. Is pause a function? Maybe we'll find out. This dot clock dot resume. See how that turns out. Just checking my laptop to make sure it's not going to melt on me here. Um, seems all right. Okay, so we're running through. We're in the PM now, so we should be seeing the nighttime monsters. And there is a ghost. We've got a nighttime monster. Cool. The timer definitely did not pause. So I don't think that those functions work. So we'll say paused equals true. And paused equals false. So I just want to see it and make sure that that timer is pausing when we're in a fight. Okay, we're in a fight and still doesn't look like it's paused. So that's kind of a problem. Hmm. I wonder if I'm referencing it in the right way. Yep, scene equal scene dot add event. Um, scene dot time this dot time dot add event. Scene dot time dot add event. Yep. So I am doing it as per this documentation. But so far, no bueno. Bummer. Okay. Now, what's changing the text? I imagine that's my tick clock function, which indeed it is. But, like, for example, I want to try and break it. So, I, I, get the feeling this is going to cause a crash if I am like I'll start hunting for an enemy well I guess I can start now come on give me an enemy okay we're a.m. right now so we should be seeing daytime enemies here we go so 7 a.m. I'm gonna hold off on killing this guy I'm gonna let him chill for a minute and when we get to PM, I bet you this is going to break things. DD indeed. Okay, we're on PM now. Break it. Let it get through the, in the music. And it didn't break it. That's interesting. Weird. Strange indeed. Um... Now, why exactly is that, I wonder? Um, I mean, another thought is I could just, 
pause the UI scene as well as pause the uh, as well as pause the game scene. That'll probably force the timer to pause. I would hope. Um, but first, I just want to take a look at this. I want to try and trigger that break again, but I want to see what's happening when we kill an enemy. I have a feeling it's adding a new entry and making it go to not a number or something. So PM, we should be seeing PM enemies. Got the key, there we go, we're in a fight. So it's weird that it logged it now. Ghost three is zero. Oh, right, because that's logging it when it's... Oh, interesting. So it's actually taking away the enemy before... Oh, so you know what? I've misunderstood how I made this. This actually might work fine, and we might not have to pause time because I may have been clever and actually thought ahead of it for this. Not likely to happen again, but you never know. So there you go, now we're in an AM monster. Kill him. Now, yeah, so it's actually taking away the enemy before it spawns the fight, which is perfect. So that actually is a way better solution than pausing time on a fight. All right, so that's actually really cool. Um, so we're in PM again, so we should be seeing ghosts. Also, I mean, I have to keep in mind that this is very much an edge case. Like, it's not like this would happen where they're fighting an enemy at the crack of dawn all the time, but I think this system actually has accounted for it pretty well. So... There you go, we just took out a, what was it? A um, duck, so that duck four to three. Now we're in PM again, so we should be seeing a ghost. I am gonna tweak that though, so instead of basing it on the, uh, the time, the AM PM time, it's gonna base it on the, uh, it's okay. Um, it's gonna base it on the, how dark it is. Okay, we're still PM. Maybe we've got a chance of fighting the boss. Let's try it. It's quiet, too quiet, yes. Now my question, oh, this might be another edge case. Hold on, I'll let it go to AM. Now are we gonna fight the boss? This is a question here. I bet we are because it's sort of set for that mode where it's the boss mode if we fight anything. Um, oh, you know what? It's probably not even going to work because I haven't even updated the code to account for the day, night, key bosses. So I bet you we're just not going to run into anything. Yeah, wow. What am I talking about? Okay. Well, anyway, that's cool to know that that works. And I can actually... It also just occurred to me that I'm not even calling these pause time, resume time functions. So obviously they're not going to work, but... Oops, doesn't matter, we don't really need them anyway. So, all right. Let's see, what else can we do here? Um, sorry, spacing out people. Um, so right, we need to adjust for the boss, uh, boss key, yeah, right here. So instead of boss key, we want day boss key, 
and night boss key. Want day boss key here and night boss key there. Now we've got those. We also need to find right there. I guess that's the only place it's being used, so that's cool. Um, however, we also need to account for that message we show and everything. Again, edge cases, but we're probably going to want to be able to change the music back to the normal music if the boss isn't coming. But hang on, we'll get to that in a second. Um, we'll say another condition like this. Or actually, we can do it inline, which would make save us a bit of code here. We'll say this dot UI dot get day night. Um, uh, day boss key or this dot night boss key. But now this is the question that I have now is where is this being primed? Because yeah, we have this boss slain is false thing. Um, so if enemies dot length Oh, interesting. Okay, we, this might be another case where we don't need to go quite as in-depth as I thought to fix something. So this is cool. So on the enemy encounter, we populate this array of enemies. And if there are any enemies, we encounter a normal enemy. Otherwise, if the boss isn't slain, we encounter the boss. Which makes sense, but then where is that boss slain thing being set right here. Um, so I guess this is actually sound, but now in this win battle thing, I know we're going to have to, yeah, so if enemy count is zero and the boss isn't slain, we push that it's quiet to quiet notification. And if the boss, if the enemies are all gone and the boss is slain, then we say all local monsters slain. Um, and right here, we're doing kind of the same thing. So if the boss is slain or the enemy count is greater than zero, we play the normal background music. Now, where's this enemy count coming from? Right here, so yeah, we might not actually need as much fancy logic as I thought here. Maybe, that would be cool. Um, so, because the music resumes the overworld music resumes when you get out of a battle, not sort of on the fly. So this might actually work and wow, we might not have to change anything. So I'm going to save that. We're going to pause our music and I'm going to let the uh, game music play. I'm also going to change it so instead of every half Oh God, I don't know. Instead of every 50 milliseconds, we're going to tick by every 100 milliseconds, just so the testing clock is still really fast, but a bit slower. Okay. There you go. We're still ticking pretty quick. See if we can take out as many of the ghosts as we can while it's still PM. If we encounter anything. 
You know what, I'm going to crank the encounter rate too, so it makes it really easy to test the encounters. Um, intro aisle map. Change the encounter rate to a lot. Very, very high frequency that will encounter something. There we go. Here's one. Ghost. Done. I want to try and take out the last enemy right as we switch between 11 p.m. and midnight. So I'm going to hold for a second, let the clock catch up with us a bit. Right around 10, I'll jump into another battle. We're at 8. Nine, and I'll start looking now. Here we go. So we should be in a battle. It should be about 10. Take him out real slow. Also, there's still no game over scene, so like if he actually kills us, it's no big deal. Um, here we go. Okay, so we're on, we're in AM now. And we just took out the last ghost. Okay, there we go. So it's not playing the boss approaching music, so that's cool. We're seeing AM enemies. Um, however, Kenzori, hey, uh, what do you think about Phaser 4? Asks Kenzori. Honestly, Kenzori, I don't actually know a ton about it yet, so I'm really interested in um, what's coming. Like, please. Tell me all about it, because I haven't been up on it at all. I'm still using 3. The only thing I know about Phaser 4 is uh, that the um, the physics engines are going to be properly modular, as far as I hear. So you're going to actually package together with your game the only uh, physics engine you want, instead of getting all of them, which is pretty cool. I like that already. Hey, Kenzori, shout out for the follow. Thanks. And hi. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, Kenzori, what's uh do you know what's going on with Phaser 4? Cuz I actually I again, I have no clue. Um So we'll take out another enemy. We're in PM now, so we'll probably hear the boss music cuz we're coming out of a battle. There we go. There's the boss approaching music. It's quiet, too quiet, and here's our ghost boss. And that's it. We've taken out all of... Uh, they will release it soon, but I'll stay for now using three. Okay, why is that, Kenzori? I'm curious to know. Why, why are you going to keep using three? So that's it. We can now freely roam at night, and there are no enemies that we're going to encounter at night because we've slain all the night enemies. We should probably also, um, no, nah, I don't know much about it, says Kenzori. Okay, fair enough, mate. Um, yeah, I don't know much about it either. I'm, I'm going to be with 3 probably for a little while, just until I can confirm that 4 has got a decent maturity to it, and it's not going to bug out really hard. But, I mean, the, you, as I'm sure you know, the guy maintaining Phaser is a genius. He's awesome, and I'm sure he'll do a great job. Yeah, exactly. You'll use four when it's stable enough. Same. Yeah, that's my plan too. Um, I'm curious to know like what new features four is going to bring though. It's going to be fun to find out. Anyways, we're now encountering AM enemies, which makes sense. The Mitching Hour. Hey there. What's up, Mitch? How you doing, buddy? Nice to see you uh, coming around, man. Um, Kenzori asks, are you using Ionic to make it work on smartphones? Um, you know, Kenzori, if I wanted to make it as an app, uh, that's definitely how I would do it. Um, but, uh, for this case, I'm actually putting together a, uh, web platform where I'm going to be providing all the games that I build for, um, a, uh, uh, 
providing all the games I build on like a membership site where you can play them on any device and you don't have to deal with app stores and all that stuff. And uh, Mitch says, doing good, man. Just popped in quickly at work right now. Yeah, nice, man. Thanks for stopping by. Um, okay, we're on the nighttime boss again. Okay, so now that's a bug. Because we must be not tracking the uh, boss slain independently. It must be boss slain for AM and PM, which would make sense because that's how it was originally. Um, so that's the first bug we got to fix, we got to deal with. So yeah, this dot boss slain. Let's find all instances of this and we're gonna have to dive, spin this around with the AM PM version as well. Um, go ahead. Go ahead, just, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can turn the fan on, just make it just on the low setting if you don't mind. Sorry, I'm currently, um, uh, uh, I'm currently, uh, babysitting. I'm, <laughs> sure, babysitting, yeah. <laughs> So boss lane, when we create, is false. So that's an easy place to start. We'll say this dot night boss slain equals false. And we'll do the same with this, but we'll change it to day boss slain. Um, have you used uh, tried using phaser with TypeScript? It, it works well, says Kenzori. I haven't actually tried it with TypeScript. I'm In general, I'm... Uh, I'm not like a huge uh, user of TypeScript. I have used it a little bit, but um, generally speaking, I just um, stick to ES6 JavaScript. I think, you know, it doesn't have the explicit typecasting, which is kind of a drag sometimes, but it's still fairly good in my opinion. It works for what I need it to. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you use it with TypeScript, Kenzori. How do you find it? Anywho, right here we're checking for this dot boss slain. Now, what I guess, <clears throat> I guess what we can do here is say, um, enemy encounter. So we're checking this again. Um, yep. Yeah. And we can say if, so if it's daytime and, oops, the day boss slan is not true. Um, you've been using JS doc, says Mitch. It's kind of quirky in VS code thinking of moving to TypeScript. Oh, cool. Cool, cool, man. Um, yeah, so like, what is the big draw for TypeScript, people? Because like, I've I've heard uh, a lot of uh, good developers really swear by it, and I'm just curious to know. So, or if it is nighttime and uh, this dot night boss slan is not true, then we'll dive in and we'll execute the boss code. Now we also have to do it here, and it looks like I'm passing in a boss slain state with the, uh, we'll keep searching for this for now in that file, but in this file, oh, interesting. Oh, right, because it's not the game UI we're worried about here, it's the, uh, TypeScript reminds me of ActionScript 3, strict types and it makes everything auto-documenting. Okay, okay, cool. So more for the auto-documenting camp, hey? Because I know there's a lot of you out there who are really into that and fair enough because like it makes uh, working with the, uh, it makes working with um, your code long-term much easier and like, you know, you're you get a, you get a really well documented code base and you don't have to put in all that effort to write out all that documentation yourself. So that is cool. And I could see that being very useful if you are working in teams. Um, 
or honestly, I guess even on your own, it would still be useful because like, yeah, I mean, you know, we all write lots of code and eventually sooner or later you do forget it. Um, Kenzori says, I started liking TypeScript once I had, once I started working in a company that uses it, if you code TypeScript clean, then it's amazing and not so complicated. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I'm yet to be exposed to it in like earnest, you know, like I've used it a tiny bit kind of like when I have to work with a, a code base that's using written in TypeScript, but um, I've never like set out my own project in TypeScript before. So yeah, I might have to give it a try at some point. So anyway, that win battle is just returning if it's is a, if it was a boss or not that you fought. So... I guess, ooh, but now this will be a little tricky because if you, again, if you slay the boss and then it ticks over into the AM, oh, nope, only with, with phaser. Oh, you guys are talking amongst yourselves. Do your thing. Um, but yeah, because I know you're right, Mitch, uh, React does support TypeScript too. So that would be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, uh, le dressiness, let's go. <laughs> I'm not all that familiar with Phaser. Is that for 3D games, asks Mitch. Um, it's mostly for 2D games, although I've heard recently you, it is possible to get 3D games working in Phaser and definitely something I'm going to investigate in the future. But no, traditionally it's two-dimensional games, Mitch. Um, dressiness, what's up? How you doing? Welcome to the stream. Now this is where it's gonna get tricky though. It's The problem is we used to only have one boss slain state only for all the enemies. You fight the one boss, it gets slain. But then we're now kinda of gonna to have to pass into the fight scene that they started, or we could just pause time again when the fight starts. That's, um, that's always a way of going about it too. And Mitch asks me, what parts have you been enjoying with Vue? Um, I really am like, like, uh, liking uh, Vue X. It's, um, it reminds me a lot of Redux, but it's kind of, um, it's simpler to get your head around and a lot of the terminology I find makes a lot more sense, like committing changes and, um, you know, um, mutations and stuff like that to the state. Um, most, I haven't actually done tons with it yet. Mostly my coworker has been doing it and I'm, you know, hats off to him. Thank him so much. Um, but, uh, no, I do also like the, um, I like the way you can have scoped CSS within your components. That's also really cool. And, um, yeah, I like how intuitive Vue X is. I still find Redux a bit wordy. Yeah, absolutely. That's how I feel about it too. And uh, Kenzori says, at the moment, you can use a library to make it 3D and will be a native feature in Phaser 4. Cool, good to know. But yes, Phaser is a 2D library. Yes, that's cool to know. It's going to be um, uh, 3D in um, Phaser 4, though, that it's going to be supported natively. Very cool. Also, uh, modules in Vuex is great. Mm hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Anyways, I just need to wrap my head around this for a second because we're gonna, we're trying to get, we're trying to tell it if they won the battle. Now, why are we even doing this? Why do we have to update? Oh, I guess this is where we update if the boss was just slain or not. So, you know, I'm not against pausing the timer when we jump into a fight. Um, so I think we're just going to try and have another attempt at doing that. And um, hopefully that's going to sort of like weed out all these edge cases where the time changes over in the middle of a fight. Um, so for that, we're going to need the game UI again. Right here. And we're just going to create those functions again, get day night. We also have pause time. 
and resume time. And uh, Kenzori, after all the hassle of React, one appreciates the simplicity of Vue. I know a lot of React devs using Vue for personal projects. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's uh, something that I noticed too, is that like React does have a really high learning curve, whereas Vue seems to be a little easier to get your head around at the start, which is nice. Um, that being said though, I do still use React for my personal projects just because with the new React hooks and everything, like using use state and um, use effect and stuff like that, once you get your head around all that stuff, it's so cool. Like class components are a thing of the past and like it's just super cool. Um, Mitch says, yeah, I've been working with React coming from Vue and it's quite tricky in places where you have to be mindful of re-renders. Yeah, on callback and on memo seems a little hackish. I like that Re React has a similar or a smaller API surface, especially with hooks. Yeah, that's right, especially with hooks. Um, Vue has so much built in to learn. Yeah, okay, interesting. Yeah, I'm always keen to hear the d both sides of the React versus Vue versus, I suppose, Angular, although not many people seem to go for Angular these days, really. Um, I could be wrong on that. Please, all the Angular community, don't hate on me. Um, but yeah, so we'll say this.clock.paused equals true for when we pause it. This.clock.paused paused, paused equals false. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Angular. Yeah, me neither, Mitch. I'm with you on that. Um, I had to write a uh, really big app for one of my previous jobs in a um, using Angular 1 way back when it was on version one. And that was, it, it wasn't terrible, but at the same time, like I, I had to get the app working on uh, on uh, Angular version, um, sorry, um, on Internet Explorer version eight. And like the first time I booted up the app, it was just like white screen. And it was like, okay, cool, this is fun. And of course, IE8 doesn't actually have a proper console. So you get to just pick through the, this page has an error, this page has an error, this page has an error. So that was fun. But uh, I did it and managed to get it working. I'm also gonna, we know the uh, music is more or less working, so I'm gonna get our stream music going up again. There you go. Hopefully that didn't blow off everyone's ears. I think I've got the uh, music at a acceptably low volume now. Um, and Mitch says, yeah, I'm a little bit iffy on Vue 3. All the new stuff looks so similar to Hooks, I feel I might as well just use React. Right, okay, yeah. I mean, I don't actually have really any experience with Vue 2. I'm just diving straight into a Vue 3 project, as we were talking about before, Mitch. And um, yeah, it does, it does strike me as very similar to React, but that's not a bad thing because React is fantastic. So, you know, yeah. Just a shame, but nah, anyway, I won't. Uh, no, uh, no, no hate on this stream. Just all uh, positive vibes. Um, what was I doing? I was trying to pause the time when they encounter an enemy. So here, where we launch the random fight, we'll say this dot ui dot uh, pause time should work. And then we want when they win the battle, we want to resume the clock, which should be, I guess we can do that in the random fight thing because that's where we're calling win battle and then we're resuming. So we're resuming the parent scene we're calling the, uh, yeah, this is a little messy. I don't really understand what I was doing here, but uh, are you using the uh, script setup thing um, in view three, I suppose you mean Mitch, um, like having the script tags in line with the, um, the template tag and the uh, the styling tags, because if that's what you mean, then yes, sir. And uh, Kenzori asks, where are you from? I'm from Canada, good sir. 
I'm in British Columbia, so the uh, rainforesty part of Canada. I read about it the other day. It saves you having to export everything. Yeah, I guess it would. It's um, it is nice having it all in one file together, and I do especially like being able to couple the uh, scoped CSS with the component that it applies to. I think that's a really nice little touch that they threw in there. That I really like, and I haven't seen a good. Um, well, I'm sure there are implementations of stuff like that in React, but I haven't really come across one that's really called to me yet. Um, now, we'll also just say this dot, oh, hold on, we probably don't have a reference to the UI in this, so I'll just, I will just do it in the maps win battle function. We'll say this dot, actually, why don't we do it after we, um, after we get through all the, uh, uh, I guess we'll do it at the top and just see what happens. But we'll say this dot UI dot resume, resume, nope, try again, resume, nope, try again, resume time. And then we'll say if this dot UI dot get day night, and we'll do uh, we'll change the boss the day boss land otherwise we'll do the night boss land day boss slain and this dot night boss slain equals boss slain I mean this still does kind of run the risk of like Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I feel like there's this still could very well blow up in our face a bit, but uh, whoa, what did I do there? Uh, lost my stream screen for a second. Um, whatever, we'll just try this and see if it actually, for starters, if it even pauses the time or not, because it wasn't before, but I think that was just me being silly and not calling the function. So there you go, time's ticking along. Get into a fight, and is the timer paused? Yes, it is. So that's perfect, that's what we want. And that should realistically alleviate all these edge cases that we could be encountering. So time still paused, and then it resumes when you get out of the battle, so that's good. It's looking good, so f it looks good so far, says Mitch. First time I'm seeing it. A tour, yes, of course. Um, I just got to decrank the uh, enemy encounter setting so we don't run into an enemy every five steps right now. But, uh, all right, so, Mitch, tour of the game. Here, you know what? I'll even get the uh, music going so you can hear that because there has been quite a lot of effort put into the uh, audio on this game, which I just blatantly turn off when I uh, am testing it. So. Here is the game, sir. Um, starts off, it's called Green Ridge, which is a little um, inside joke amongst me and my friends. It's uh, effectively a prison that I was in, but that's for another time. You get to choose your character at the start. There's all these peoples that you can choose from. I'll be the little uh, goblin fellow. We've got a ticking clock, which is currently really accelerated just because we're testing time-based things. But in reality, one minute is going to equal out to one second. So it's going to ask, it's going to go through this a lot slower. But I don't know if you can tell, but it's it gets darker and lighter based on the, um, the current time. So anyway, this is the game. You can run around. You can chop down trees. Really cool, says Mitch. Thanks, mate. There's uh, random encounters. So when it's in the PM, this is what we've been coding in tonight, is when it's nighttime, you fight the nighttime enemies, whereas when it's daytime, you fight daytime enemies, which is currently just based on whether it says AM or PM on the clock, but we're going to change that in, the, in a bit to make it a little more intuitive so it's more based on the... Uh, 
Oh, the tree chopping is like that space game you were making. Yeah, exactly, man. I love that, uh, those kind of like runescape elements that show up in certain RPG games. I thought that game did a terrific job of um, having objects on the map that you can interact with and stuff. And I just, uh, I love that. So I'm trying to bring that back in this game here. So anyway, um, I'm glad that that time pausing thing works. So the random encounter logic does still need a little bit of work. Sometimes they encounter you encounter them really quickly. Other times you takes forever and you don't encounter anything. Um, Kenzori says, phaser audio is kind of messy, sometimes bugs for smartphones. My coworker is using HowlerJS and says it works perfectly. Kenzori, yeah, that's um, actually been my experience too, is um, uh, on, yeah, on smartphones, oftentimes the uh, phaser audio doesn't work perfectly, particularly iPhones. And um, I have found that uh, working with the um, Howler library is exactly how I solved it too when I was having issues with that. Um, anywho. I just thought of another little fix we can do for another issue. But anyway, Mitch, there's chests you can open. There's all this stuff. You can pop open your menu and flip through your inventory. Um, so this is all the stuff we've got so far, just a bunch of knives from killing those ghosts and a simple sword with a little Zelda reference. Um, you've got a skills menu, which I want to replace these icons eventually, but for now they work. Um, you've got a wood cutting skill and a combat skill. These are the only two that are hooked up at the moment. Uh, this is all over my head, says Mitch. Um, and then the system one, which is going to be like how you save the game, but that doesn't go anywhere yet. Um, then there's this little house to which you can go inside, which is the mysterious cabin. Ooh. <laughs> You can go down into this uh, underwater tunnel because the first map you're on is on an island. So this is how you get to the other islands. There's a little chest up here, which contains a yellow potion. And any item you get, including enemy drops and stuff you get from chests, all show up in your inventory. It starts you on the first item you get, and then it goes all the way around to the most recent items. So if you want the most recent item, you go left. If you want the oldest items, you go right. I thought that was a nice little touch of the radial inventory thing. Ooh. <laughs> and then... Uh, yeah, so you keep going through this tunnel and eventually you find down here, there are more stairs taking you up. And this is the uh, most recent map that I've been working on, although it's throwing errors and uh, it's totally incomplete at the moment. But uh, yeah, that's basically the uh, tour to the game so far, Mitch. Um, I'm just gonna mute the game again and replay our music. Love it, says Mitch. Thanks, man. Dee Dee. Um, now, the other thing I was just that just occurred to me is um, we encountered one of the little uh, idiosyncrasies that I figured would come about um, with the day-night system including the enemy night set and the uh, daytime night set, which is that um, the uh, when you trigger the boss battle, the music, the overworld music changes. But um, if you trigger the boss incoming right around midnight and then it crosses over to the next day, the boss incoming music is still playing, but you're not actually going to encounter the boss. So to fix that, I think what we're going to do is in the game UI, when we switch the uh, when we switch the AMPM right here is where we're going to want to um, do something about the music. So in the game UI, we have a reference to the parent scene somewhere up here, parent, eh, 
Come on. Somewhere. Somewhere we've got it. Parent scene. This dot parent scene right here. Um, so somewhere in here is basically what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to stop the uh, music playing if it's the boss incoming music or even are you using any Rex plugins? Asked Kenzori. Um, not currently. We're right now. The only plugin I'm using is um, this. Uh, show you it here. I forget what it's called, but it's um, yeah, Phaser UI tools. Apparently, it's version star, which is interesting. I've never seen that before, but yeah, Phaser UI tools. Which, um, if you take a look at it, Kenzori, it's really nice. It's how I'm getting those. Um, those radial menus working. It's a really nice touch and um, it's super easy to implement and it's really well done. But um, it is kind of limited on like the, uh, it's, it's I, w I wouldn't really call it a mature plugin. So like if you're gonna use it, tread lightly because uh, don't expect too much from it basically. But um, for what, it, it, for what it, it intends to deliver, it delivers it quite well. Um, but no, no, no Rex plugins yet. Um, I'm sure at some point or another I will be using some because Rex kills it for plugins. Rex Rainbow, he's a, a baller in the Phaser community for sure. Now, anyway, um, basically, I mean, it's not like the end of the world if the music doesn't switch back over, but I would like it to. So, but the thing is we're gonna have to do this like, we're probably gonna have to like abstract the music handling stuff from the, where is it? Win battle I think is where we, yeah, here. Right here, so if the boss is, oh, we're, first of all, we're not even, uh, we're still using the old one. Shit. Um, so, I guess really we need to do another wrapper of this. So I'm gonna fix this up first. He has a UI plugin too, hee <laughs> hee, but I haven't tried it yet, says uh, um, Kenzori. Yeah, Kenzori, I have tried his UI plugin and it is very good. However, my only beef with it is that it uses DOM elements, like HTML DOM elements in the, uh, oh, that they overlay over the canvas screen and it works brilliantly. It works really well. But the problem is on, um, on uh, iPhone devices, if you double tap anywhere on those DOM elements, it'll zoom in and there's really nothing you can do about it. Like Apple, for whatever reason, just does not want to let people um, disable zooming completely for anyone. So that's a real bummer. But um, other than that, they're terrific. So like if you're making for desktop only, absolutely go for gold. But if you're sort of wanting mobile and you want it to be um, iOS compatible, then definitely just be aware of that. Um, yeah, but uh, no, otherwise it's brilliant. Day boss slam. Now we'll do the same thing for um, night. Night boss slam, night blo bloss, night boss slam. We can even change the wording on these notifications too. We can say like all daytime monsters have been slain, all nighttime monsters have been slain. So that's cool. That was something else I wanted to do, but that was easy to do it in there. Now we're also going to have to do it in here. where we can say if, yeah, so we're gonna have to say if um, this dot UI dot get day night. So if it's daytime, we'll do this. Otherwise, 
if it's nighttime, we'll do exactly the same thing, but we're gonna be checking here for day boss slain, and we're gonna be checking here for night boss slain. So that should fix up any weird bugs that were in there. Not that I really noticed any of them. Um, the, the big thing I wanna deal with now though is when you switch over from AM to PM, I want it to, um, if it's playing the boss music but it doesn't make sense for the boss music to be playing in the daytime, then I think we're gonna have to stop the boss music and play the regular background music. So already I see that we're kind of in a good position to do that because we have two BGM objects. We've got the regular background music and the boss approaching background music. Um, so somewhere in, would it be in the game UI or would it be in the random fight? Be in the game UI because this is, this is where we want to do it right here. We want to say something along the lines of if, um, I mean, really what we have to do is kind of abstract this, this logic here. Um, now, uh, Mitch says, Sarek Dan, I've got to head off, mate. Thanks for the tour. Of course, Mitch. Have a great day at work. Hope it all goes smoothly for you, sir. And uh, yeah, um, stay in touch as you do. Uh, so, but yeah, so I guess we've got two options. We can kind of reproduce this um, or recreate this uh, this whole like music triggering logic exclusively in the um, inside the uh, game UI, or we could abstract this so that there's kind of a specialized function that handles the music. And as I'm saying it, I already like that version better. So we'll say play background music. That's I think what we'll call it. So for now, why don't we just copy this entire function And, uh, but you know what? This is kind of tangled up with the, yeah, but it's not like these computations are gonna be noticeable. So you know what? Yeah, 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 we'll, we'll still abstract it. So first we'll just start with the exact same function as win battle and we'll chop out the stuff we don't need like resume time and we don't actually need that either. Um, what we do need is we're gonna need the enemy count. So we'll leave that. So for the daytime, nighttime enemy count, we don't need to push the uh, notifications. Oops. What did I do there? There we go. Um, so we don't need the notifications. We can ditch that. We don't need to mess with the camera at all. But what we do need is this little chunk right here, this if else right here. Because we'll know if the boss is slain based on the win battle results. And the enemy count we're calculating on the fly right here. And then we're playing either the background music approaching or the boss mu approaching music or the regular background music based on the day night boss land and the enemy count. Again, also for day night, but that's kind of all baked into it. So really, we can just do this. And in win battle, we'll replace this chunk that we just chopped out with this dot play BGM. And then on top of that, we'll do it right here, but we'll say, maybe we'll make a function for stop BGM too, because that'll be handy to have in the future. I'm gonna add a comment here that says plays appropriate 
background music. And then we'll also have one that says stop BGM, which is, oh, you know what? We don't even need that because we're just using the stop all sounds thing in phaser for that. So here we can say, um, this dot sound dot stop all. And then we can say this dot parent scene. Game UI's parent scene would be the map, so that makes sense. Um, dot play BGM. So it is going to cause the music to stop when it switches between AM and PM, but I'm okay with that. And in, in fact, in the future, we could look at implementing a different music for nighttime than daytime, which I think would be kind of cool anyway. So, yeah. Um, let's uh, enable the game's music again. And we'll go back to the game UI, save that, pause the stream music. Choose our character. Pikachu. Pikachu. I choose you. <laughs> I'll be this guy. So now my goal is to beat up all the ghosts before we get to uh, the AM, which will be a bit easier now because the time freezes when you're in a battle, which I do think was a good design, des design decision because uh, it's just gonna solve so many edge cases and really it doesn't really deter from the game that much. <clears throat> That's one ghost down, here's the other one. What's up? Oh shoot. Wow. <laughs> you gotta go too, says Kenzori. Have a nice day or night. Thank you, Kenzori. You too. Have fun doing what you gotta do, and uh, hopefully I'll see you next time. Thanks for hanging out, Kenzori. Um, anywho, now, we're on to the boss. Now I'm gonna let this just run. We're not going to actually fight the boss. I just want to hear it. Hey, look at that. I can... Wow, I just realized... I just realized you guys aren't hearing any of what I'm hearing because I was silly and I didn't turn on the right audio thing. <clears throat> Professional streamer. Boom, boom. There we go, and look at that, it flips over the music just as it should, and I can't turn it down now because I just flipped that over halfway through, so I'm going to turn that down so it's not blaring in my ear, and I'll switch it back so you guys can hear it. Now, um, yeah, so I'm pretty pleased with that, and uh, we'll set the volume back to zero on the game. Play the stream music that you guys didn't hear the entire stream, but that's okay. We'll just pretend you guys could hear what I was hearing. And I'll just decrank that slightly again. There you go. So now you guys can hear my music. That's, uh, that was silly. Oops. Good. Most of the stream without music, but it's fine. Dee Dee. Um. <laughs> Anyways, night enemies slash boss, I am happy to mark that as complete. Boom. Those were the two big things I wanted to get down for this stream tonight, so for the remainder of this, the only thing really to do is I wanted to flesh out the archi archipelago map, archipelago, however you say that, um, which we can start doing. I had been working on it off screen a little for a while, so this is what we're, we got now. Um, just a little scattering of islands. Oops. 
and um, gonna have bridges going between them and it's gonna be all water that you can't walk through Go and, and uh, yeah Got me so messed up. So, Don't ignore the signs let's just we've do had just enough. that and start of working the on the islands. I think I left off on this one. I think all the other ones were more or less the shape I wanted. This one I just have to fine tune a little. So, big this so and a little more screen real estate. And. Do this will work. Mm, that might not work perfectly, but oh, more hope. Uh, yeah, that's not gonna fit perfectly, but we do maybe just uh, straight down. No. Just did a little nub on the end of that. That looks alright. Now we can go straight up here. Hit B so it randomizes it. And we can go straight across here. And that's looking more or less done for the shape of that island. So now I think we can establish some it's got more bridges me between around, them. But I can't ignore Finish off all the, the bridge work. That I found in this whole damn thing. So for that, that we got I'm going to select the bridge we have already. Hold the me knowing. More or less. Why do I D so it's bigger. Have to suffer through the thinking. Why do I mm -hmm. Mm. Okay, it's not quite right, so let's select a different chunk of the bridge. Maybe right there. And overlay it, yep, that looks good. So that is a bridge between the first two islands. Now I want to have the next bridge going between. the second two islands. So something like this. Oops, that's what I wanted. And so maybe like hmm. Let's take a look there. Two Just chop off the end and then replace with these guys. That looks pretty good. Together, all the islands, I suppose. 
I really get what this piece is supposed to be, but I they were sleeping, they were snooze on me. I was dreaming, but we're food to eat. Why they sleeping? Why they snooze on me? I was seizing opportunity. This now they don't know what to do with me. I can go on hard like I'm in puberty. Rebellions in my blood, there ain't no rule in me. Coming for the top, this is a new in me. One of my goals with this game is to not be a huge perfectionist and if things don't look completely perfect I won't have a spaz. Oops. Dee Dee. Get a little bit of that bridge action there. And we can take this whole chunk. There, like, oh, that actually doesn't even look that bad, so no worries. There we go. And another bridge to that island. And then from here, we we'll bridge out over to that island. This looks like another island that I don't think I finished off, so we'll do that in a sec. But uh, first, let's see. We're gonna need one coming down to here. So we kinda wanna give that some room. So about, we'll just have to go from there. And chunk right now. Chunk it out a bit, and then right there. started. Bridges. Wonderful. You just do one more from here to here. Huh. Head 
acho que vocês vão ver, né? Not brilliant, but it's fine. And these ones, we can drop this in, should be a nice easy draw. Water, which is, I think, this guy. Yep, it's got the collides true property. So, boom. Now that looks like a little archipelago, or archipelago, or however you pronounce that word. DB. Huh? It's Ciabatta. Ciabatta. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it just occurred to me too that um, there's one last little thing we want to do with the day-night cycle is currently the day-night state is based on the AM-PM thing. But that doesn't quite work because it's not really dark all the time in the AM or the PM, and it's not light all the time in the AM. So we want to sort of shift that to be based more on the um, more on the uh, yeah. Also, we're going to be getting errors when we get encounters on maps where we haven't updated the code yet. But that's okay. We can fix that easy. Um, but we're gonna want to 
yeah, base it on the how dark it is, not necessarily how uh, AM, PM it is. Here we go, our Kipalajo. Ooh, it's glitchy as all hell. Oh, and that doesn't work either, I just realized, because... Balls, we need to cut out paths for those bridges, otherwise it's not going to work good. Oh man, balls. Also, it seems like we have encountered a fatal error because the time has frozen and I cannot move. Oops. Well, I guess we can cut out the paths later. We should probably fix the uh, day-night errors before we move on. So, just tuck that over there. Reload this guy. So yeah, let's start with making the uh, day-night enemies based on the, uh, not the time so much, but the um, tint of dark that we we're dealing with. And then we're also going to have to specify for maps that don't change tint. Um, I don't know how we're going to do that. We'll get to that in a minute. but. Um, start with the island that's working, and we'll make, work our way up from there. So, yeah, first things first. We, luckily, since we chucked that in its own little function, the uh, get day night, we can return. Instead of this, we can say, um, this dot night gfx dot alpha is less than 0.5, and if it's greater than 0.5, we're assuming it's dark, so it's night. And if it's less than 0.5, then it's um, daytime. So that actually alone should work. Let's just play around and see if it works. Uh, it so right now I'm expecting daytime enemies. And indeed, that's a daytime enemy, so cool. Very good. Still daytime enemies. That's a squirrel, so he's definitely a daytime enemy. Squirrel. So let's let it tick over until it's a bit darker. So I would say at this point it's dark enough that I would expect to see a nighttime enemy. So let's try and find one. Should be a nighttime enemy now. There it is, it's a ghost. Cool. That worked, that was very easy. Now the harder part is going to be determining where we only want one enemy roster because we have a fixed uh, daytime nighttime thing. Hmm, yeah. I guess we could just hack a solution to this and say underwater tunnel enemy roster is um, night and we only have nighttime monsters because like just doing this would technically work. It's not the best solution because I'll have to be very cognizant of this when I'm creating maps but Realistically, it kind of does serve the purpose. 
and yeah, you know what, I'm happy with that. I don't want to dig too deep into it right now, so if the fixed darkness is greater than or equal to 0.5, we have to specify night enemies. You can put a little note here. If Now let's just test this out and see if we've got any bugs going on or if it's working. So because it's at 0 0.5 exactly, we should be only encountering night enemies which are the only ones I've specified for this tunnel, so let's find out. Alright, we got a fight, that's better than we were doing before, and that's the kind of monster we're expecting, so I dare say that works. The Archipelago map will still not be working, so we gotta fix up that one next. And, uh, yeah. So for now, we don't have any enemies, which is concerning. Um, oh, I must have copied this over from. Uh, the uh, cave map. So for now, we'll just specify it being the same as the first island. Change this up in the future, but for now, that works. Let's get all the way over to the archipelago, and then we'll uh, test that out, make sure it works, and I think that's about where I want to call things for tonight quite happy with that progress. And uh, yeah. Into the cave we go. Rather. We should be encountering enemies in here and they'll only be of the nighttime variety, because that's all we've specified for this fixed time or fixed darkness area. Good, good. That's still working. Now, continue on. Oh, if we can get to the island without a million encounters would be sweet. There is a little sneaky way to avoid encounters in this game. And uh, the trick is to just not move your cursor, or move your cursor as minimally as possible. Because it only actually checks for random encounters when it detects a pointer move. So if you can keep your pointer as fixed as possible, you'll avoid uh, encounters. And I kind of want to leave that in the final game as like a little pro gamer move where some people get that you can do that. And then uh, it's like a little sneaky way to do it. Alright, cool. So we're on the Archipelago. It is a dynamic darkness area, so that means being almost 11 p.m. it is dark and you should be encountering ghosts. You're not going to be able to actually go over the wow, apparently you can, but um, anyways, we'll come back to that. So, is it a ghost? It is a good, good, good ghost. That goes, and... Cool, so that seems to work. Um, now let's just fix up the map so that it's not... Uh, so that you can actually walk over the bridges. I think... 
see about this, but I think I'm probably going to want to do a little more than just, uh, I think I'm going to have to adjust some of the collision detection on these uh, docks. But anyway, for now, I'll just do this. Now, these have collisions I they don't, so that's good. I just realized that. Oh, here's what we can do. Instead of having a collision water, just choose a non collision water. Kind of a hacky map solution, but it'll do me fine. This bridge next. My only concern, you're probably going to be able to walk off the bridge ever so slightly, but again, not being a perfectionist with this game, I'm just trying to keep it simple. Done. None is better than perfect. I also think my computer's starting to, uh, how are we doing on the heat here? It's not on fire, so that's a good sign. Oops. Taking quite a while to drop those tiles, and that's not really an intensive task, so slightly concerning, but no big deal. As long as this is all looking good, I'm happy to leave that here for the night. So we're good. Oops. And there's 
one. Good to know at least it works. Now the moment of truth is going to be watching how these docks work. I have a sneaking suspicion we're going to have to tweak one more thing, but we'll just take a look. There you go, we're on the archipelago. Oh, well, probably help if I didn't have them. Yeah, so I think there's one more thing I want to tweak on these, other than making them not transparent, because right now you can see right through them. Um, but can walk over them now and you can't actually walk off the edges as much as I thought so that's nice um, okay so that's good now beat this fool up actually let's take down one more because I feel like the boss is nigh ghost and then we'll see the boss ghost. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Dee -dee -dee. Well, although Time's not pausing for us anymore. That's a little note. Maybe it's just on the bosses. Anyway, that's uh, all nighttime monsters have been slain. There you go. Ooh. So at least that's that working. Um, I'm just gonna make my final little tweak to the map and then I think we're gonna call it there for tonight's stream. And that final little tweak is in the forest out tile set. I originally did set up colliders on these, I believe. So that, 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 that. Oi. That, 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 that that, 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 and that. Turn that off. Again, I don't really know what these junction pieces are for, so I'm not even gonna bother, but uh, for those posts, we're gonna save that. Then in Archipelago, we're gonna go with this one. I'm gonna say replace with forest out. We're gonna re-embed it. And hopefully, if we re-export that, we'll get a little less glitchiness when we're walking over the uh, over the docks. Disregard the overlaying music, but here we go. Now we're cabin. Downstairs we go. To the tunnel. Get our way through here. And then, I mean, I am a little over the time I said I would, I wanted to stream tonight. I wanted to keep it to two hours, but if we can solve that one last little bug of the Times not pausing for the boss fights, then I think we'll try and do that really quick. And there you go, much better, much cleaner collision detection on the docks. The layering is a little janked up, but I'm not gonna worry too much about that. I.e. you can sort of walk over them, but I guess they're low enough to the ground that it kind of makes sense. Yeah, whatever, not too worried. Looks like you're on the other side of it there, so yeah, whatever. Again, trying not to be a perfectionist with this game, so complete is better than perfect. So 
So it is pausing correctly for the uh, monster fights. I don't know if we're gonna actually have time to encounter a boss before the time is switches over to daytime here, but we'll try. Oh, there we go. Found the boss. And here we are, yeah. So we're, time is still progressing for the boss. And all that bug probably is, is we're just, we just need to call that pause time function in another spot wherever we're spawning the boss. So I'm gonna close out a tile because we're done editing maps for tonight. Um, however, in our map, let's find night boss key right here and there it is this dot scene dot pause we just need to say right I think I did it right under where the sound effect plays yeah UI dot pause time do it in the same spot for the boss and that ought to fix it Let's just test it on the main island to make sure we're good. And uh, I think I'll be the big dwarf guy. Let it take over to uh, nighttime. dark enough that we're going to be seeing ghosts, so... Come on ghosts, come on! I need some ghosts! There we go. Time is paused for ghost A. take out the other ones and just hope that the boss battle is also paused. Okay, the second one. One more, and I think we got time for that one more. There we go. Go him. And we're on to the ghost boss. It's quiet, too quiet. And here's the ghost boss. And time is paused. Perfect. So we got the glitch. Everything is hunky dory. And, uh,. That, ladies and gentlemen, I think is where I am happy to call tonight's stream. Thank you for hanging out, those of you who did, and um, for anyone watching in the future on YouTube, hope this has been helpful to you in some way or another. And uh, yeah, without further ado, um, I, I'm going to stop streaming. So yeah, hope you have a great night, everybody. Yeah, solid. Thank you. I know.